GPT-3 is able to uh, behave as if, in the sense that you can set it up in such a way using a prompt, uh, that you can ask it, what would you do or uh, what text would you produce about a situation in which a super intelligent AI would be communicating with an outside environment under the following circumstances? And then it's able to give you that text. And it's pretty good. But uh, it doesn't really update its model in the sense that it's really changing the relationship um, over what it has learned already uh, as a result of completely novel situations, for instance. And by itself, it doesn't care about anything. So uh, the, the system itself is, uh, in some sense, not too dissimilar to the autocomplete function in your phone. It's only the statistics that it does over words and language are much, much more elaborate and much more detailed. And the context that it uses to predict the next word is larger than the autocomplete in your phone that's typically only to, uh, going to use a, a couple words to predict the next one. Right? So it's a much, much more elaborate context that it's going to use. And uh, to uh, get this to become like us, it would probably uh, have to have an unbounded context. There are things in your life that only make sense over a very long range of a very long time span. So our context is not uh, restricted to the last 2,000 tokens or something like this to predict the next action, but uh, it's something that goes much more in the past and into the future. Also, we uh, don't just predict from the past, we also predict from the future, which means we want to achieve certain states and avoid other states, and that also informs our context. And you can GP uh, set the up CPT-3 in such a way that it can do this to some extent, but uh, it's basically a trick that you are um, applying onto it. There's also uh, the fact that GPT-3 is not multimodal. It's able to form embeddings over language and, and do that very well. And it also learns many regularities in the language. So it's, for instance, able to perform simple arithmetic, logit arithmetic. But it's not as good as uh, in doing arithmetic as uh, a machine learning system that has been trained to uh, get things right. Instead, it's going to produce arithmetic that looks more like what it's seen so far in texts on the internet, yeah. which means it doesn't do very large numbers. And it's mostly doing things that it's seen before. And, and it could, uh, it, it's confused by like dollar signs and, and commas, like for instance, yeah. Yeah, um, but you could also say it's not confused. It just uh, it doesn't know that it's expected to say something about numbers. It's just continuing text, right? It, mm. In a sense, it doesn't know what it's doing. It's just going to continue the most likely text. Mm. And uh, so you would have to trick the uh, introduction of the text to make uh, correct numerical calculations more likely in, in the presence of strange inputs or strange things happening in the text. So for instance, you can... Uh, give it a session where it's correcting inputs. Mm. And uh, you uh, start this out, with, for instance, by saying the following is a set of um, uh, corrections over faulty inputs. And then you give it a handful of examples, and then you can continue giving it f uh, somewhat faulty uh, inputs over, say, um, formulas that you want to enter correctly, and it's going to do its best to correct them. Mm. 